Ladies and gentlemen, before starting the presentation, I would like to thank you, TDC, for inviting our corporation, ECIC, to participate in this seminar. Firstly, I will give you some background of our corporation. ECIC is a non-profit-making organization and financially self-sufficient with over 45 years. It was established in 1966 under Hong Kong Expo Credit Insurance Corporation Ordinance Chapter 1115. It has 30 billion contingent liability guaranteed to provide by the government. ECIC aims to provide export credit insurance protection for Hong Kong registered companies against non-payment risk arising from commercial and political events when they offer credit terms to their overseas buyers up to 180 days. The post-shipment risk covered can be classified as buyer risk and country risk. Buyer risk include bankruptcy or insolvency, payment default and repudiation to take delivery of goods. Country risks include blockage or delay in foreign exchange remittance, import ban, cancellation of import license, payment moratorium, war revolution or natural disasters. And the maximum indemnity provided is up to 90% of the credit limit issued. In 2011, total insured business of the corporation reached 87 billion. USA remained the largest insured market at 38%. UK continues to be the second largest insured market at 35%. Mainland China was third at 7%. Germany came fourth at 5% and followed by Switzerland. Insured business to Eastern Europe account for 1% of annual insured business of ECIC in last year. In terms of product, the top five insured product are, toy, are clothing, toys, electronics, electrical appliance, and metallic products. Altogether, these five product kinds account for 49% of annual insured business. Now, let me show you some statistics about Hong Kong exports to Eastern Europe, Poland, Hungary, and Czech Republic. In the past 10 years, Hong Kong exports to Eastern Europe increased steadily except 2009, which was the year following the outbreak of financial crisis in, four, in Q4 2008 after bankruptcy of Lehman Brothers. Hong Kong exports picked up quickly in 2010 and growth continued in 2011. In last year, exports amount to Eastern Europe climbed to 46 billion. Poland, Hungary and Czech Republic account for 13, 20 and 12 percentage 12% respectively. About Hong Kong exports to Poland, the trend followed the same as those for Eastern Europe. In last year, exports to Poland almost at 6 billion. The major export type product type are electrical appliance and telecommunications. For Hungary, the export trend also in upward in the last 10 years, except 2009, exports amount reached 9 billion in last year. And telecommunications and electrical appliances together account for over 80% of total exports to Hungary. For Czech Republic, again, Hong Kong exports to this country also in similar upward trend. In last year, Exports amount to Czech Republic reached 5.5 billion, and telecommunication is the largest export product at 35%. Now, I will show you the ECIC's insurer business and credit limit issued on these three countries. The corporation's insurer business to Poland has been growing steadily, and there was even a slight increase in the in 2009 during the crisis period. In last year, the insured business to Poland was almost at 500 million. Electronics and jewelry together account for a total of 30%. For Hungary, insured business to this country also in upward trend, except 2009, the insured business volume surpassed 140 in 2011. 
the insured products are widely spread over different types, and there is no single product account for over 10%. And the largest insured product was clothing at 7%. <coughs> Insured business to Czech Republic follows similar trend as Poland and Hungary. It reached 45 million in last year. Major products were electronics, papers, office and stationary supplies. About credit limit issued on Poland, both the number and the amount of credit limit issued in the last 10 years were in upward trend. Although the number of credit limit issued returns to normal level in the last two years. The amount of credit limit issued in 2011 climbed to record high level at 488 million, which is doubled when compared to previous year. The sharp increase was due to issued of several large credit limits on buyers, which belongs to multinational group with solid financial strength. For Hungary, both number and amount of credit limit in upward trend in, ten, in last 10 years. The amount of credit limit issued in 2011 was over 80 million. For Czech Republic, the number of credit limit issued on this country was less than 100 in each of the past 10 years because of relatively small number of applications received. The, number, the amount of credit limit increased sharply in last year and exceeded 100 million. And the reason was also due to issue of several large credit limits on buyers belongs to listed companies and global group. From this slide, three observations are conclude. Over the past 10 years, the, num the general trend on the number of credit limit issued on Eastern Europe has been increasing because of more applications received. But in view of the weak economic e recoveries on the matured markets, more exporters have expanded into emerging markets and Eastern Europe, which were less adversely impacted during the crisis. Second, the number of credit limit issued in 2009 was exceptionally high. It was because of two reasons. First, Hong Kong exporters are less insurance mined before, but they became more alert and risk averse after the crisis. In view of increasing risk awareness of exporters, they don't mind to spend some money to buy insurance to insure their receivables even on some good named buyers. At the crisis outbreak, Private credit insurers reduce their cover on satellite basis, but not on individual buyer basis. As a result, exporters were not able to obtain the cover from the private market and they're looking for other insurance companies. With government background, exporters have more confidence in EZIC. And as a result, EZIC received more proposals for cover from exporters and more applications from our policyholders. And the third conclusion was, although the number of issue, credit limit issued dropped in the last ten year, in the last two years dropped, but the amount of the credit limit issued was re at record high level in 2011. This shows that Hong Kong exporters are doing larger business volume on Eastern Europe markets. Mm -hmm. ECIC's underwriting experience on Poland. Hungary and Czech Republic has been good so far. For the past 10 years, there was no more than three claim claims. There was no more than three claims payment made in each single year on these countries. The event of loss for most claim places were payment defaults. Most of the individual claims payment was less than 500,000 except one large claims payment report on Poland in 2010 as 6.7 million. <coughs> About this large single claim case, 
The buyer is a sole proprietor engaged in manufacture of leather accessories with 50 employees. The Hong Kong exporters involved has 20 years experience with this buyer. But since May 2009, due to its slow sales as a result of a financial tsunami, the buyer was unable to make payments on time. The buyer requests to extend the due date of several shipments and they proposed to settle by weekly installments. However, this buyer fails to honor its promise. This case illustrates that even so for some buyer with long trading history and good payment record before, their liquidity can also deteriorate in a short period of time because of the environmental factors. Now, I'm going to share with you some major risk areas and warning signals when trading with a company. In the political and economic side, exporters have to understand whether the buyer country has any adverse political climate. Is the country undergoing sharp contraction in economic growth? Is it facing high inflation, unemployment rate, or high external debt? If so, the government will exercise, may, may exercise tightened fiscal policy, it will reduce the spending and reduce the welfare on the citizens or increase the tax income. The consumer's spending may be in impact in this case. In management and ownership area, you'd better to know about the background and, uh, of the management staff and the shareholders and their experience in the field. On business side, exporters have to understand the history of the company. Is it a new setup or a long established company? New setup company usually are more vulnerable in the first few years of establishment. And also to understand its product type, the product's trade, is it necessities or luxury goods? The impact on the demand of these two products can be very different under poor economy. Also, to understand the product cycle of the product trade, for high technology and highly fashionable products, their life cycles are usually relatively short and the demand of the product can drop quickly and there would be maybe a higher chance of the buyer not to take the delivered goods. On the financial side, exporters have to understand if the buyer is suffering from continued decline in the sales or profits over years, any drastic drop in the gross margin, is the liquidity tight with low cash flow or negative cash flow, um, and also is, it, is the gearing is high. Here are several examples of warning signals. First is sudden or frequent change of senior management. This may imply the disputes among the management staff and the shareholders in the development of the company policy. Second is overexpansion. Is the overexpansion financed? Is, is, the, is the business expansion financed by the capital injection of the shareholders or by bank loan? If that financing is used to support the store opening or business expansion, high interest expense may be incurred or net loss or negative cash flow may result. Sharp shrink in market share. Delay payment or request to change the payment method, usually from more secure terms to less secure terms, or is the buyer request for longer credit, pay, credit, credit period. Is the buyer suffering from continuous loss with high infantry level over years, drawing excessive loans, or delayed to render the financial statements? To reduce the non-payment risk, of course exporters can choose not to offer credit terms to their customers, but if credit sales cannot be avoided, Exporters may consider the following risk mitigation tools. First one is self-insurance. Exporters, in this case, in this situation, exporters have to take their own risk of non-payment by the buyers. 
but they may consider to tighten the credit control policy, maybe by shortening the lim uh, credit period, not more than OA 60 days in some cases. Second is non-recourse financing. The risk of insolvency and non-payment is completely transferred to the factoring company. If the buyer goes bankrupt or they refuse to pay the invoice, the factor cannot come back to the exporters for the payment. The third one is export credit insurance, which can provide insurance to protect against unavoidable non-payment risk on export transactions made in credit terms. About export credit insurance, there are usually four functions that it can perform. First is the protection. The percentage of indemnity provided is up to 90% of the credit limit issued by the insurers. Second is credit management. Insurers will monitor and periodically review the buyer's operation and its financial results through obtaining the credit reports regularly and by collecting the payment experience from other policyholders. Receivable management. In case overdue is report, insurers can share the global debt collection network with the exporters. For some insurers, like ECIC, we will also share the debt pursuing expenses up to 90% with exporters. The last function is financing. Insurance policy issued by insurers are accepted by the banking community as a useful collateral for discounted export bills. The protection afforded to the policyholders can be extended to the policyholders' bank by a letter of authority, which means that the claims can be made directly to the bank and can be instrumental in assisting the exporters policyholders in obtaining their banking facilities they need. Taking ECIC as an example, the export credit insurance covered the sales of contract entered into between the Hong Kong seller and the overseas buyers. Also, the sales of contract entered into between the Hong Kong seller and Hong Kong buyer, as long as this Hong Kong buyer is a local exporter engaged in export business or is a buying office of a global group. The port of loading is not a matter of concern. It can be in Hong Kong or in offshore. It means that not only for goods shipped from Hong Kong, but also those transport directly from suppliers to countries or places to their destinations without passing through the Hong Kong, as long as the policyholder is the principal seller to overseas buyer in the sales contract. By using the sales buy endorsement, the, ex the, the in insurance protection can also extend to the sales contract entered into between Hong Kong's seller controlled subsidiaries in China or in overseas and their local clients with our overseas buyers. But what is meant by the controlled entity, a contr controlled subsidiary, it means that the Hong Kong policyholders has over 50% ownership in the overseas subsidiaries. Since the 5th December 2011, ECIC has launched several enhanced measures to support SMEs. First is to offer special policy terms and premium discount to companies with smaller annual business volume. Second to extend the insurance cover to sales contracts between Hong Kong companies controlled subsidiaries in mainland China or overseas markets and their local or overseas buyers. Third is waiver of annual policy fee with policy commencement date falling between November, uh, December 2011 to November 2012. Third, and the fourth is offering free, free credit the assessments and consulting service on buyers. The last one is to shorten the processing time of credit limit applications at 1 million or below to within three working days upon receipt 
of adequate information. If, you, if any of you have interest in ECIC service, you can visit ECIC's homepage or call the hotline for inquiry or fee code. Thank you for your participation.